We're starting the kitab, inshallah, it's called Adab al Mufrad. We are starting the kitab Adab al Mufrad by Imam al Bukhari. Babu Kaulu Kauli hi ta'ala, wa sayin al Insana bi wali dehi ihsana. Imam al Bukhari chapter a bab by saying, wa sayin al Insana. We ordered the people. Biwalidayhi, their parents, ihsanan. We ordered them to deal with their parents upon good. He chaptered this. So the first chaptering is this. He brought the chain of narration by saying, Haddathana Abu al-Walid al-Qala, Haddathana Shu'bat al-Qala, Al-Qala al-Walid. Ibn al-Aizari, Akhbarani, Qala Samiyu'ta Aba Amr al-Shaybani. Yaqulu, Haddathana sahibu hadihi dar, wa awma abiyadihi ila dari abdillahi. Qala, sa'altu al-Nabiyya, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ayyu al-amali ahabbu ila Allah azza wa jal. Qala, الصلاة على وقتها قلت ثم أي قال ثم بر الوالدين قلت ثم أي قال ثم الجهاد في سبيل الله قال حدثني بهن ولو استزدته لزادني عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه in this hadith he mentioned three actions he mentioned three actions how does the hadith start أبا عمر الشيباني he said the owner of this house told me from this hadith before I go into sorry let me mention the chat the ayah wa usayna lisana bi walidayhi ihsana Imam al-Baghawi rahimahullah in the tafsir of that ayah in his tafsir in his tafsir um, he said what's the reference for the ayah the ayah is the 15th ayah surah al-Ahqaf Surah Al-Ahqaf, Ayah 15. Imam Al-Baghawi, he said in his tafsir, Barran bihima. What does it mean? Wasayna al-insana biwalidayhi al-husna. Baghawi, rahimahullah, what is ihsanan ama husna? The wordings of the hadith is is disputed about because there are two ayahs in the Quran. There's Wasayna al-insana biwalidayhi ihsana and there's Wasayna al-insana biwalidayhi al-husna. The one that says Wasayna al-insana biwalidayhi Ihsanan is in Surah Nisa. And the one that says Husna is in Surah Al-Haqqaf, Ayah 15. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Imam Al-Baghawi, he has a tafsir. Imam Al-Baghawi, there it is, it's right up there. Tafsir Al-Baghawi, right at the top. Ma'alim Al-Tanzeel. Imam Al-Baghawi, rahimahullah, he said, Barran bihima, obedient towards his parents. Wa'atfan alihima. What does it mean, good to the parents? What does it mean? First of all, it means, Barran bihima, obedient. Your mom tells you, stand up. You don't question her. Stand up. Sit down, do this. Ha. We're going to go to it, inshallah, in more details. وَعَطْفًا بِهِمَا And that you're soft. Very soft for your parents. They can walk all over you. They can get what they want from you. You are soft. As hard as you are in public, as hard as you are maybe in other places, but when you come home, you become a rabbit. You run around with your mother, you're soft, you put your head down. Okay, okay, okay. Alima. معناه هو وصينا الإنسان أن يفعل بوالده ما يحسن. and is that it means that you do good towards your parents. some people assume and think I don't do anything I don't do any problems to my parents I don't harm them I don't disobey them you know not disobey them but I don't harm them I don't bring them any problem home I don't cause them any harm. he thinks that's obedience and he thinks that's righteousness. لا والله it isn't. all my friends their parents you know they diss their parents I don't. I don't do anything for her and I don't harm her. That's not obedience. That's what you do with your neighbors. That's your neighbor's rights. That you don't harm them. And if you're able to not do anything to them, for them, then you don't, you at least withhold your harm from them. If you're unable to do things for people, you withhold your harm at least from them. Like your parents, that's not what they want. That's not what they deserve from you. What do they deserve from you? Ihsan. You're kind. You're soft. You're generous towards them. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he said this. يقول تعالى آمر عباده بالإحسان إلى الوالدين. الله سبحانه وتعالى ordered his servants to be righteous and to be obedient and to be kind and soft towards their parents. بعد الحث على التمسك بتوحيده. After Allah ordered them to hold on to the monotheism, the Tawheed, لا إله إلا الله, محمد رسول الله. So straight after the Tawheed, Allah ordered the believers what to be obedient towards their parents. فإن الوالدين هما سبب وجود الإنسان. The reason why. You were, you are existing at this you are existing in this world today is because of them. Whose reason, whose sake do you live for? Who I mean so whose sake did you come in this in the existence of this world? It's your parents. 
And because of that, they have their biggest rights to be obeyed and listened to. Your father, his obedience is what? That you give to him. Your mother is what? Father tends to just what? Things from you and he just wants you to keep moving. That's how the father tends to be. Like what does the mother want? He doesn't want that. The mother, if you give her everything, it's not enough. She wants you to sit with her, hug her, laugh with her. Say, mommy, remember that time when you said, oh, I got you well. <laughs> Talking with her, ishfaq, softness. Getting her oil, put, use, massaging her leg. For, that's for her, much bigger than the 20,000 you might give to her. The father doesn't want all of that. He just wants infaq. So Ibn Kathir realizes. He said, for Wali Dibin infaq, the father is what? Give. Because the mother, what she will do is, even if she takes from, she got five, three kids of the mother, she'll take from one kid and give it to her mouth That's the added one. Or she might even take it to you and give it back to you again. The father will take it and he will use it. You give it to him and you let him use it. You let him. This ayah, who did it come down on? The ayah that Bukhari chapter. It came down to Sa'ad ibn Waqas in Sahih Muslim. And now he fi ayati min al Quran, he said, Hala fa ummu Sa'ad. Why? His mother swore after he took Islam and she found out that he took Islam. Sa'ad ibn Waqas was known in, within the Arab pagans. He was known for his obedience for his mother. She knew how much obedient he, how obedient he was to her. So when, this, when she realized that he took Islam, she said to him, I will never speak to you ever again. Until you disbelieve in your religion. Leave this religion. Turn away from it. And I'm not going to eat. And I'm not going to drink. And I'm not even going to shade. I'm not going to, have, I'm not going to go take a shade. I'm going to shade myself. Like go under a tree and I'm going to stay right in the heat. Ah, burn myself. And you know what the people are going to say when they see me? This is a man who's aql ummi. You were disobedient to me. This is what the people are going to say to him. So what happened? He came to his mother. He said, my mother, Wallahi, if all the hair on your body, you had that, that much soul in you, and one after the other you were dying, I will never leave my religion for you. She realized that she's dealing with what? A whole different person now. She's dealing with what? A different per person that she knew of. Strong on his ground. But then Allah sent this eye on him. He said, وَصَيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْتُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامِينَ وَصَيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْتُ أُمُّهُ كُرْهًا وَوَضَعَتُ كُرْهًا وَحَمْلُهُ وَفِصَالُهُ لَا وَصَيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْتُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامِينَ أَنِشْكُ لِي وَالْوَالِدَيْكَ إِلَيَّ الْمَسِيرَ وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَى أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ If they fight against you by telling you to leave my religion Allah said فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Do not obey them But then وَصَاحِبُ مَا فِي الدُّنْيَا بَعْرُوفَ Befriend them Even then your parents are disbelievers What do you do? You befriend them You're their friend وَصَاحِبُ مَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَ Now there's a difference between friending them So there's a difference between تَوَلِّي Taking them as an ally and befriending a person. It's different. Mm -hmm. You can't befriend a disbeliever. You can never take him as a will you like it. That's good for I thought befriending means to push him away. From the bahir of the ayah, the ulama, they do to fake of this issue. You are allowed to do, but you can't take them as a willy. Why? Allah Ta'ala, Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَا تَجِدُ قَوْمَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآَاتِرِ وَادُّونَ مَنْ حَادَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَوْ كَانُوا آبَاءُهُمْ أَوْ أَبْنَاءُهُمْ أَوْ إِخْوَانُهُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُهُمْ وَلَا كَتَبَ فِي قُلُوبِهِ الْمُلِيمَانَ So you don't find a person who iman has touched his heart, then taking his wali, even his families, Allah mentions. So, but you can't do musahaba. Musahibna, do you ma'rufa? But the musahaba has to be upon. So what is the word, the word wawassayna, what is the word al-wasiyyah? What does it mean in the ayah? It means ordered. Allah ordered, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the hadith mentions after that, that Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab, Sorry, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, sorry, who's the narrator of the hadith. This man who narrated from him, whose name was Abu Amr al-Shaybani, he said, I pointed towards the, the house. He pointed towards the, the house. This is a point that we have to now point out, which is, we know that we, the Sahabas are the reliable to us. They are Udul. All the Sahabas are what? They're reliable. As long as we find out that this person authentically, his narration it goes to the companion from Sahaba time onwards, we don't need to know after that. The Sahabas are reliable to us. 
Are you with me? Even if it becomes apparent to us that a companion narrates a story and we know he wasn't alive at that time. Or he wasn't even present at that time. And we know he wasn't. We won't ask ourselves where could he have probably heard it from. Such as the incident that took place when the Prophet said the revelation was coming down on him. The wahi, how the revelation started. One of the scholars and sahabas that narrated the incident was who? Abdullah ibn Abbas. He narrated it. And Abdullah ibn Abbas wasn't born. He was born three years before the Prophet migrated from Medina, Mecca. So he wasn't even born when the wahi was coming down. How could he have known the story and how could he have narrated it? The scholars just said he narrated from who? He narrated from other sahabas. We don't need to know which sahabi he narrated it from. You see, it doesn't matter to us. It doesn't have to mention it. As long as he ascribes it to the Prophet. Because narrated from another sahabi, we don't need to know who he is. Also, what is permissible is that if a sahabi, if a tabi'i ascribes something to a sahabi, he doesn't always have to mention the name of the sahabi. He can ascribe him by something we will recognize it's him. Like what Abu Amr Shaybani did here, which is he pointed towards the house. And he said, the owner of this... Referring to is who? Referring to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. So he said, the owner of this house informed me. So hadathana, we were informed. Sahib hadihi dar. The owner of this building, the house, told us, and he pointed towards the house of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Qala that he said, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Sa'altu nabiyya, I asked the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I asked the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what? Ayyul amali, which action is most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Brothers, when the Sahabas asked this type of questions, it wasn't they just asked it because it was, they just wanted to spend more time with the Prophet, you know, have that conversation and that dialogue and, you know, it was just random questions. La abadir. The Sahabas asked these questions because they wanted to implement it. They wanted to change their life by following the Prophet's action. So they said, oh, Messenger of Allah, Ayyul amali ahabbu illallah, which action is most beloved to Allah? Meaning, we will want to implement it. We want to, we want to change our, we want to follow the best of actions. And the reason, the second reason why the Sahabas would ask this question is because our lifespan, Ikhwan, is very, very short. We don't live for that long. We want what is actions that are very high due to the short time that we live in this world. The span of this ummah is between 60 to what? And little do they go over, so 60 to 70. And little go over 70. So what the Sahabas were looking for was actions that are what? That they can straight away go to what? High ranks in Jannah. They didn't want to do small actions that would not take them very far. They wanted what was big and immense. So the Messenger وسلم, he said to him, and Allah, this shows us the tanafus, how the companions hasten to righteous actions. Musabakati ila al They will compete with one another upon righteousness. They will ask questions that will encompass a lot of things. The Prophet said to them, As-salatu ala waqtiha. The salah that is done upon it. So the first action that the Prophet mentioned from the three, the first one is what? As-salatu ala waqtiha. The salah that is done at its correct time. وَلِذَلِكَ brothers, مِمَّا لَا شَكَّ فِيهِ That which there is no doubt about. And the salah that is done at its, at, at its correct time, it is the best action that can ever be done. Afdul al The best of actions. What is meant by the salah here? What is meant by it? It means the salah which is correctly done. Three things have been found in the salah. The, the pillars are present. What are the pillars? Fatih has recited. What are the pillars? Shurut, it's conditions. What's the difference between the pillar and the condition? What's the difference between rukun and shart? The shart is what is found before the action. Shart, condition, is what is found before the action, such as the wudu. And the rukun is what is found fi mahiyat al It's in act, it's in actually present in action itself, such as what? Fatiha. Fatiha is a rukun. The wudu. Ablution is what? A shart is a condition. So, the conditions prior to the action is found in you. Facing the Qibla. All of these. The wudu are found in you. And the pillars in the salah. The things that are pillars that you can't leave. Are present in you. And the third one which is the wajibat. The things that are mandatory. The things that are 
mandatory. What is the difference between the pillar and the wajibat? The condition we already know. If the condition is not found before the action, the action doesn't exist. You have to redo the action again. A person prays the salah without a wudu. He recognizes, he realizes later that he doesn't have wudu. What do we say to him? Pray again, brother. The condition is missing for me. That salah doesn't exist. It's like as though you didn't pray. We will say to him, go and pray. Very good. But what about the difference between the pillar and the wajibat in the salah? The difference between the two is that the wajibat, you don't necessarily have to bring it back. The pillar, you have to bring the whole rak'ah back. You with me? Yeah. Oh. So Judah Sahwi can take back the wajibat. For example, you missed the tahiyat, the middle tahiyat. The tashahud. The tashahud. The middle tashahud. You missed it. It's wajib that you bring it. You come with it, right? Is it wajib? Yes. It's wajib. You missed it. Do you have to bring the whole rak'ah back again? No. What's enough for you? To the <coughs> Judah Sahwi that you bring. That's wajib. But you forgot in one whole rak'ah to read Surah Al Fatiha. Bring back the whole rak'ah, brother. Do you see the difference? Because you have to learn this, the rulings regarding Salah. Very important. So the Salah that is done correctly at its correct timing here is meant by every action is done at the right time. The wudu prior to the action. The pillars were done in the right place at the right time. The wajibat were done at the right time. So it doesn't necessarily only mean the timing. It doesn't mean that. It actually means the shurut and the arkan and the Wajibat are present in it. In what way, Lakin? Ala kifiyati salat in Nabi, according to how the Prophet prayed. Um, after we finish this class, can you go in that detail? With I will, us? definitely, I will, inshallah. I'm just going to ask that. Ala kifiyati lati salat in Nabi, according to what? The, the way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed. Ikhwani, there was no action. That the Prophet did more than the salah. I have to remember this. There is no action at all that the Prophet emphasized on as much as the salah. He prayed in the desert and showed them it. He prayed on the pulpit, climbed at the pulpit, and he prayed. Just so they could pray, see how he prays. He did it, alayhi salatu salam, every time and every place he showed them the salah. He corrected them. Even in the salah, alayhi salatu salam, if he heard anything that was said in the salah, he would finish it. He said, who is it who do this to me in this prayer? He emphasized on it so much, he said, Sallu, pray, kama ra'aytumuni usali. Pray the way I, you see me will pray. Pray that way. Emphasize it on Ali So that's why he وسلم, is now bringing up the, the Salah, brothers. If a person, brothers, deliberately misses the Salah at its correct time, deliberately, he knows it and he lets it go by, deliberately, he can never bring it back again, that Salah. If that Salah goes by and he knows the time, it's not that he forgot, it's not that it slipped his mind, it isn't that he was forced to not pray. He was forced. Or he slept and woke up late. He prayed. No problem. Oh, there's no problem. But this brother knows or this sister knows deliberately the salah came in. They know. And they watched it go in by, I'll do it. I'll pray later. I'll do it later. If the salah's time is over and it finishes, that individual cannot bring that prayer back. Allah says in the Quran, Inna salat kanat ala al-mu'minina kitab al The salah is upon the servant. What? At a particular time, a shop has an opening time and it has a closing time. You can't just go there after the closing time and say, "You know what? Can somebody serve me?" The time is gone now; it's over. It's closed. The salah is like that. The time is over. And once that salah's time is over, you take the ruling of a person who abandons it. And then, you, from that, you take the ruling of a person who is a disbeliever. So the person should be very scared of this action. The salah is a right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person cannot, cannot shorten it. Now, so, what is the right time for the salah? We're going to mention later, inshallah. Oh. The salah has what is known as uh, was the madhab that I, I studied, inshallah. Later we'll go into it. Qala thumma ay. After the prophets, the first one was what? The salah. Thumma ay. What does ay mean? A thumma ayyul amari ahabbu. A which action takes second after this? The right of Allah has been mentioned. The salah has now been spoken about. The biggest pillar after la ilaha illallah. Muhammad al Rasulullah. 
Now, the Prophet was asked, what, which action is best? The Prophet said, alayhi salam, to was salam, thumma birrul walidin. After that, the obedience of the parents. This is the second action. The obedience, ikhwani, the obedience of the parents. Look at it. Even in the Quran, it was like that. And now in the Sunnah, the Prophet did the same. Which is what? In the Quran, what did Allah say? He said, قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْنْ وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنْ أَحْسَانًا Obey Allah alone. Uh, sorry, worship Allah alone. Do not associate him with partners. Then be obedient towards your parents. Second in rank. After Allah's right, the parents came. In another place, Allah says, سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا In another place, what did he say? And ishkur li, thank me, wali wali dayka and your parents. So when Allah ever mentions his rights, automatically, straight after that, Allah, you see him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, mentioning the rights of who? The parents. The Prophet did the same. The rights of Allah, which is what? The salah, according to the correct time. That is now the rights of, rights of Allah. After that is the right of who? The parents. The Prophet, tathanna bihim. This that was used is tumba, which is a harfu atf. Harfu atf and uh, 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 a letter, a particle that is used to show that there's an order here. The woe doesn't necessarily show order, by the way. So you all know. The word, in, if I say, Dakhala Zaydun wa Amran, Zayd and Amr entered. You don't know which one entered first. Woe doesn't show you who entered first. It just shows that they both shared the action. But if I say Thumma, it shows who came first. If I say Dakhala Zaydun, Zayd entered. Thumma Amr, and then after the Amr entered, you will know that Zayd was before Amr. So you know the order. Thumma teaches you this. The word here, Thumma, is showing us that the right of Allah, nothing is like it. The wow wasn't used. It has to be distinguished that the right of Allah, nothing is up that level. The parents, they take the second rights, and that's what the Prophet said and used. Which is what? Birrul walidayn. That the person is obedient towards his parents. The woman and the male. Both are obedient towards their parents. There is that this belief, brothers, that, that, for example, your parent will tell you to do something and a person would say, ah, well, I, my, that's the girls, man. They know, they know to do that for their mother. We brothers don't have to do that. The obedience of the parents, it doesn't matter you're male or female. Every person upon their parents, the right is equal. It is equal. It is what? It is equal. A man came to the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this hadith indicates it as well. Which is that he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he came to fight with the Prophet. And he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I left my parents and I came to fight with you. And I left my two parents, both of them crying when I left. I left my two parents crying and I came to fight with you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to him, Go to both of them that you've left. The way you made them cry, make them laugh again. The way you made them cry. So the jihad that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was going, even that though he was weak, in, sorry, he was low in number, and he needed power, he needed army, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam still was emphasizing on those people who came to him. The narration, some of them indicate that that person came from Yemen. Look how much distance that that individual cut. It's not, it's not a flight, it's not a driving through the desert or easy. It's months of walking. He finally made it and he's now told to go back to his parents again. This shows you the position of your parents if, the, if, the, if there's a jihad going on and your parent is not happy with it, then that individual should stay with their parent and not participate in that battle. Is that, that makes no difference which one it is. Nah, it is a difference between it's, whether it's uh, defensive. No, or there's a difference. It's defensive. There's a difference between it. If it's jihad or talab, that the Muslims are going to fight with the disbelievers, then then you take the you take the up uh, and permission of the parents. But if it's jihad, jihad, def, if you're deflected of the land, the disbelievers coming to the land and they fight. So nowadays you find people who are traveling without their parents' permission, just going like that, and it puts sadness on the eyes of the parents. They cry. This is not permissible. Person should not go. The rights of the parents is not light. The rights of your parents is not light. It's not a light matter. 
The third, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Al jihadu fi sabilillah." Jihadu fi sabilillah is of two types. The strongest of the two is what? Jihadu? Nafs. Is the fighting with yourself. Making sure that you as an individual are implementing the Sharia in your life, life, in your household. And the Ummah's weakness, it arises mainly for this, from this one. When the people's Iman is low. And there is kufr and shirk and ilhad and bid'ah in the ranks and in the lines of the Muslims. Allah doesn't give those type of people nasr. And He doesn't give them victory. When the people fight with themselves, they strengthen their manners and their akhlaq towards Allah and His Messenger. And their akhlaq and their manners towards them, amongst the people that they're dealing with and amongst themselves. Then and only then does Allah give them victory. The Sahabas disobeyed one time the Prophet وسلم, in the battle of Uhud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not, not only did he make, they faced the consequences alone, but also the Prophet faced it with them. What happened? His tooth was broken, alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa Because when this type of trials Allah sends and it happens, it's not only going to happen to the righteous people, brothers. Uh, sorry, the evildoers. Everyone will suffer in this matter. So that's why the people of knowledge and the scholars always stop the people or well, fear Allah. Or well, you know what's going to happen to us if you do this. Now, Then the Shaykh, Rahimahullah, this, we, we'll stop with this hadith, inshallah. He said, Haddathana Adam, قال Qala Haddathana Shu'bata, Qala Haddathana Ya'la Ibn Ata'i Anabi, Ana Abdullah Ibn Umar, Qala Rida Rabbi. في رضا الوالد وسخط الرب في سخط الوالد. This the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم what did he say? رضا الرب Allah's pleasement سبحانه وتعالى to be Allah to be pleased. It's connected to the please that the person pleases who's his parents. لأن الله تبارك وتعالى because Allah ordered what? Allah ordered أن يطاع الأب ويكرم that the father is obeyed and he is honored. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry when the parents are angry. Because he ordered you to obey them and honor them. And because you chose to go against his order, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with you. You can say sakhtu bi fath sini or you can say sukhtu bi bammi asini. You can say sakhtu or sukhtu. It's the same. It's karahiyah, dislike. Lishayi wa adam al ridabi. And that you're not pleased with it. Allah is not pleased with the individual. Whose parents are not pleased with him. And Allah is happy with the individual whose parents happy with him. 